السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. We begin with the praise of Allah تعالى. We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to send His peace and blessings upon His final messenger, Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام. Upon his family, his companions, and all those who follow his way until the day of judgment, we ask Allah Taala to send His peace and blessings upon his family, his companions, his uh, his, and those who follow his way. And we ask Allah Subhanahu Taala to make us amongst them, Ya Rab. So Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless all of you uh, to come to this early session. Uh, I know that uh, many people are at this time trying to uh, wake up and get you know get their breakfast and um, and uh, and may Allah Subhanahu Taala reward all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all the organizers, uh, the young Muslim brothers and sisters who put this uh, conference together. As, uh, as he mentioned, you know, I, uh, I still have uh, PTSD of my day back in days back in YM. Uh, that's why every time I see our young brothers, um, you know, I was like, did you get some rest? Uh, and they say yes, but I know they didn't. But uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you rest, inshallah, in this life and the next. I mean, Ya Rab. So, you know, the, the few moments that we have together, I wanted to reflect upon this topic, you know, this idea of building a learning mindset. Um, and there's no time more important to really emphasize this reality or emphasize the importance of this reality than the time that we live in today. Alhamdulillah, you know, if you've, uh, the, the number of sessions that we've had, um, you know, I've, I've kind of reiterated this point and this concept and this reality that, you know, in living in this age, we are, we are kind of essentially in a time period, especially now, more than ever, in which it is imperative upon every one of us to commit ourselves to knowledge. The reason for this is because we're exposed to so many ideas. And that exposure is at a level that is uh, historical. It is something that, is, that we've, we've not seen in history before. Just by the very nature of the, 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 the transmission of communication and the ability to, to, be, uh, to see all sorts of ideas and thoughts. And so it is imperative upon every one of us, especially those of us who are, alhamdulillah, in our youth, uh, uh, we have this obligation to commit ourselves to knowledge in order to preserve ourselves and to protect ourselves. Because, you know, one of the common themes of the kind of the, the conversations that we've been having with, with you all is this idea that, like, you know, how do we discern? How do we differentiate? How do we identify what is right and what is wrong? And, you know, really at, at, its, at its core, the most important thing for us to understand and recognize is that we will not be able to be able to differentiate. We will not be able to discern. We will not be able to sift through all these, this plethora of ideas if we're not grounded, if we're not grounded in revelation. And being grounded in revelation means we need to be committed, we need to be grounded in ilm, in knowledge. And so this concept of building a learning mindset, a mindset is, it, it is extremely important. At the outset, at the very outset, the, 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 the ulama have said in, historically that لا تقليد بالإيمان. The first thing, the first thing that we need to understand is that there is no concept of blind following when it comes to faith. What do I mean by this? Alhamdulillah, many of us, maybe not all of us, but many of us have been blessed to be born into Muslim families. We have Muslim parents. And not all of us have that, that blessing. And some of us have come to Islam through our various journeys. And may Allah Ta'ala continue to protect us and allow us to grow in that journey. But many of us, we've, we've been born into Muslim families. And we may have this idea that Islam is some type of cultural identity. You know, some of us, we may ask the question, you know, you have Judaism being named after Ju Judah. You have Christianity being named after the Christ, Isa alayhi salatu salam. And then some may ask, you know, historically in the Western tradition, they may have described Muslims as Muhammadan, right? But we don't describe ourselves as Muhammadan. We describe ourselves as Muslim. And Muslim is a, an important term. The concept of being a Muslim and the concept of Islam, it is not a descriptive term. It doesn't describe you as an identity of some sort. It describes you, it is, a, it, it is an active term. It describes action, some type of action. A Muslim is someone who de performs the action of Islam. So the action of Islam, it's a verb. Islam is a verbal noun. It comes from aslama yuslimu, which means to submit to Allah, to submit. And ultimately it means to submit to the will of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to understand that Muslim is not something that is you inherit. 
You don't inherit Islam from your parents. To be Muslim means to actively submit yourself to the will of God. And we do so by recognizing He is our Lord, one and only, subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizing prophethood and submitting ourselves to the revelation that the prophets came with, culminizing and finalizing and summarizing in the Risala of Rasulullah, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we can only come to that reality. We can only come to that reality through knowledge, through ilm, through knowledge. It's not something that you inherit. It's not an identity that you have inherited. It's not a cultural reality. You know, my culture, like, you know, why are you wearing the hijab? Well, my culture says, uh, dictates this. No, it's not a culture. My, I, I wear this hijab, I wear this type of clothing, this modest clothing as a man or a woman, is because I have submitted myself to the will of God. It is an action that I have committed to. And it is based upon my faith in God, my iman in God. And I don't like to translate often the, the, the word iman is translated as faith. I don't like to translate it as, as such because it's limited in its connotation. When you think about faith, you know, like put your faith in so-and-so, there's this connotation that you're blindly putting your faith in that ent entity. But iman, as we understand it in Islam, is not blind faith. لا تقليد بالإيمان as the ulama have said تقليد is blind faith to follow something without evidence without understanding there's no such thing as that every single human being has the moral obligation to come to Iman through the evidence and so we identify and understand that we come to Iman through evidence so what I like to translate Iman as as evidence based belief and this, I take this from my teacher, Sheikh Hamza Karamali. That Iman is evidence-based belief. We come to Iman, belief in La ilaha illallah, not through blind faith, not through inheritance, not through cultural, regional, geographical realities. Rather, we come through that Iman through evidence. And that evidence is derived through ilm, through knowledge and reflection. And this is a command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the Quran. As he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, فَعْلَمُوا أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ اعلم, اعلموا, Allah commands us, have knowledge. There's knowledge, there's evidence, there is, there is, there is, there is a, a process of coming to the reality, the certainty, أَنَّهُ that the reality is, this is Dhamir al-Sha'in. The reality is, La ilaha illallah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only one worthy of worship. And all the, kind, all the meaning that is derived from that, La ilaha illallah, that phrase, La ilaha illallah. So the first thing in, in building a learning mindset is understanding the why. Why is it that we need to learn? We must learn first and foremost because it is a moral obligation upon us. It's an obligation upon us. We need to come to know, we need to, we need to learn, and it is, it is a process of coming to know. That's a process. It requires struggle, it requires action, it requires, it requires a commitment. And then when we come to that commitment, we submit ourselves to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wholeheartedly. Why? Because we came to that through a process of purification, a process of knowledge, a process of learning and reflection. So the first thing that I wanted to highlight is that in order for us to build a learning mindset, we need to understand the why. The why is we have a moral obligation to know through evidence, through knowledge, أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That Islam is the truth and that the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ is true. And then through that we submit to ourselves to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing, Allah subhanahu we need to understand the second thing when it comes to knowledge is that knowledge is not an intellectual pursuit. The way that we've come to understand knowledge in our modern times and especially in the Western, in the West, is that knowledge is some type of intellectual pursuit. That sometimes something that you, you just, it is it's something that's metaphysical or something that's out there, it's a cognitive practice 
and it has no other purpose other than to exercise our brains and our cognition. That knowledge as it is understood in our faith, in our deen, in our, in our religion, is something that is more profound than that. And we find that in the very description of our purpose of creation. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tudhuriyat, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونِ That I have not created jinn or men except with the sole fundamental purpose of what? Why do I exist? That's a question that we ask ourselves. Why do I even exist? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you exist. I created you as a human being. Why? لِيَعْبُدُونِ So that the human being will worship me. عبادة. The concept of ibadah. Imam uh, 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 Ibn Abbas, Abdullah Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, one of the companions of the Prophet and one of the great mufassireen of Qur'an, he explains the meaning of لِيَعْبُدُونِ أَيْ لِيَعْرِفُونِ The reason the concept of ibadah is intertwined with the concept of ma'rifa. Ma'rifa. Ma'rifa means to come to know. To come to know. So the end goal of ilm, the end goal of the process of knowledge is to come to ma'rifatullahi ta'ala. To come to this, 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 this maqam, this, this, this state, internally and externally, where you are in the state of ma'rifatullah. And the state of ma'rifatullah is one in which knowledge permeates every aspect of your being such that when you come to know who Allah ta'ala is, in its true, in its haqiqah, in its reality, you can't help but submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't help but obey Allah. You can't help but worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what it means to come to ma'rifatillah. When you come to ma'rifatullah, you come to that state. In such, you come to such a state that you are compelled. It is something that you can't even control it. Because you've reached such a state in your pursuit of knowledge, you are compelled to serve and submit yourself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, فَعْلَمُوا أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ It's not an intellectual pursuit. It is a process. A process that takes us to the maqam, the station, the state of ma'rifa. And when we come to that state of ma'rifa, it is when we allow that ilm, that knowledge, to permeate every aspect of our being. We allow that knowledge to permeate our psyche. We allow that knowledge to permeate our emotions. We allow that uh, knowledge to permeate our personality. We allow that knowledge to permeate our character. We allow that knowledge to permeate our behavior. And it becomes so ingrained within us that we are compelled to uh, 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 we are compelled to behave in such a way that it is now second nature to us. It is not intentional in, the, in, in, in that sense. It is intentional in the sense that we have uh, imbibed the reality of that ilm internally. So the second point that I wanted to highlight today, inshallah, in building a learning mindset, when we talk about the why, number one is because it's an obligation upon us. Number two, is to recognize and understand the purpose of that knowledge is to reach the state of ma'rifa. And that state of ma'rifa is to reach a state in which you have internalized the reality of that knowledge to such an extent that you, are sub you submit yourself willingly to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are compelled to submit yourself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that knowledge. And so we recognize that ilm is a transformative reality. It has the transformative potential. It's not just an intellectual pursuit, but rather the purpose of knowledge is to reform and transform ourselves. Reform and transform ourselves. And this is what I've derived from Imam al-Haddad in his book, the book of assistance, Risalat al-Mu'awana, he says very beautifully, he talks about the people of knowledge. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Rahman Rahim, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعَلَمُونَ If you don't know, ask the people of dhikr. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people of knowledge. Again, it's another dimension to understanding the reality of ilm, the reality of knowledge. That the one who has knowledge is from the people of dhikr, ahlu dhikr. And so Imam al-Haddad, he describes, who are these ahlu dhikr that Allah ta'ala is describing in the Quran? He says, وَأَهْلُ الذِّكْرِ هُمُ الْعُلَمَاء بِاللَّهِ وَبِدِينِهِ So the ahl al-dhikr are the scholars, the people who have knowledge of God and knowledge of his deen. But then he goes on to describe what, that, what does it mean to be a person of knowledge. So a person of knowledge, so you can, when he's, we're understanding that knowledge is not just this intellectual reality, but rather it has something that is more profound than that. To be ahl al-dhikr, which is the ultimate goal of knowledge, is to be the one who has knowledge of Allah and, his, of, and of his deen, and then he describes him. He says, Al-'amiluna bi uh, uh, ilmihim. The ones who act with the knowledge which they have, they have obtained. That knowledge translates to action. Ibtigha'i wajhillah. Seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-zahiduna fi dunya The ones who have to denunciate the world. They disconnect themselves from love of this world. It doesn't mean you disconnect yourself from the world because we live in this world. We need to obtain our rizq through the material in which Allah Ta'ala has ordained upon us. But we, we, we disconnect our hearts from that material world. That although you must seek sustenance through the material, we need to get our degrees, we need to get our jobs and our skills set so that we can obtain the rizq that Allah Ta'ala has ordained upon us. But we don't allow that pursuit of wealth, that pursuit of rizq to take us away from the true purpose of our existence, which is what? And dhikrillahi ta'ala. To be in a state of constant remembrance of God. And then he continues in describing the ulama, أَدَّاعُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ الْمُكَاشَفُونَ بِأَسْرَالِ اللَّهِ these are the ones who call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the, one, the person of knowledge has not only imbibed that knowledge in such a way that it permeates through their character and their thoughts and their reflections and their worldview and their personality and every aspect of their being, but also, and, it, and it, it's reflected in their behavior, but also they call others to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's the burden, that's the responsibility that's placed upon the person of knowledge. Not just calling them willy-nilly, but calling them with basira. With basira. And then he says, المكاشفون بإسرار الله They're the ones who are, the, Allah reveals to them his secrets. And then he goes to say, subhanAllah, after describing who the Ahl al-Dhikr are in his time, he says, you'll be far-fetched to find anybody from, a, you, you may find that it's difficult to find such people today. Because mashallah, there's many intelligent people, many people with knowledge from an intellectual perspective. But people who, who fit this description, he says, man, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to find these people. Even this, hundreds of years ago when he wrote this risala, he says, it's really hard to find such people today. You may say, oh, you can expand the whole entire earth and you may not find a single person like this. He's obviously being expressive in, in this, or he's having mubalagha, or he's like being exaggerative in his description of this. But then he says, and he gives us hope. He says, لا تزال uh, 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 Then he says, والأرض لا تخلو من قا من لا تخلو من قائم من قائم لله بحجة. He says, even though you may feel like this, this seems like a really hard description to find people who fit this description. He says, the earth, the earth will never cease to have such people upon the earth. The earth will always have such people upon the earth. The people of, that fit this description, the people of true ilm, true knowledge, who have this learning mindset, right? He says, these people will always exist, bihujja. And I'm going to tell you the evidence, he says. He says, what's the evidence for this? لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق. As the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, there will always be a ta'if, a, 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 a group of people in my ummah, who will always exist. لا, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق who are, who are ظاهرين على الحق who are those who are established the truth. Who established the truth. This hadith, we hear it so many times and it's used in so many contexts. 
But Imam al-Haddad, he's describing this hadith, he's explaining this hadith to mean Ahl al-Dhikr. The people, the people who fit this description, these are the ta'ifa that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is speaking about. And then he says, who are these people? Ula'ika nujum al-ard. These are the stars of the earth. Wahumal al-amana. They are the carriers of the trust. The trust of the Anbiya. Wa nuwab al-mustafa. They are the ones who are the deputies of the Prophet Muhammad, of the, of the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa warathatu al-anbiya. And the inheritors of the Prophets. As we know, according to another hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and then he mentions the ayah, "Ulaika hizb Allah, ala inna hizb Allahi humul muflihun." He said, "These are the party of Allah, and indeed, the party of Allah, they will be the successful ones in this world and the next." Why am I mentioning this? Insha'Allah, I am mentioning this because the moment the earth ceases to have such people upon it, it will cease to exist. One of the major signs of the Day of Judgment is that ilm will be taken from this earth. And ilm will be taken from this earth through the death of the ulama, to the death of the people of knowledge. When, any, when there is no longer any semblance of the inheritance of wahi, the inheritance of the anbiya, through the death of the people who carry it, when that ceases to exist upon this earth, because the people who carry it will be fewer and fewer and fewer. And the transmission of the ilm will be less and less and less to such an extent that it will no longer be, be, uh, be, uh, be, be transmitted upon this earth. When that happens, the earth serves no more purpose. And that's when the day of judgment will come. So, it is more of a, a, um, a, 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 um, a, um, a, a command to us or a call to us, especially us young people. I'm not young anymore. I'm 40 now. Khalas, officially done. No more, no more youth for me. But for you, my dear respected brothers and sisters, it is a call to you to commit yourself to knowledge, recognizing that it is an ob obligation upon you. Recognizing that it is upon every one of us to come to Iman with, with evidence, with knowledge, with understanding. And then when we do so, we recognize that that knowledge is a transformative reality. The ultimate goal of that knowledge is to reach the maqam, the state of ma'rifatullah. Ma to the, 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 and what does ma'rifatullah mean? That you, are, you reach such an embodiment of that knowledge to such an extent that you are compelled to the ibadah of Allah, the submission and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we, f we, we seek to be from those who are described here by Imam al-Haddad. Those who have knowledge of Allah and His deen, who practice what they learn, seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, detach ourselves from the love and the desire of this world. And we do not allow this world to take us away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we call others to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So building a learning mindset means to establish this within our hearts, inshallah. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala give us knowledge that is beneficial and benefit us, benefit us from the knowledge that we have learned. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.